House is in session, members. We're going to start with file item 58, AB 1933. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1933 by Assemblymember Brownlee and others, an act relating to foster children. Ms. Brownlee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. AB 1933 seeks to ensure long-term school stability for children in foster care. The Senate amendments clarify that specified provisions of this bill do not require school districts to provide transportation services to a foster youth to attend school. It also specifies that school districts have the discretion of providing transportation services if they so choose. The bill has no no votes and has received bipartisan support, and I respectfully ask for your aye vote on concurrence. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Mr. Nilo. Uh, Madam Speaker, I wonder if this would be the appropriate time for me to uh, introduce to the chambers my cousin, uh, Margaret Minnis, our... Sorry, we're in the middle oh, of the I'm sorry, call. I thought you had closed... Sorry. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Ms. Brownlee moves the call. Now, Mr. Nilo? Mr. Nilo? Under announcements? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, <laughs> the jury will ignore the previous statement, and uh, I was just wondering if this would be the appropriate time for, inter me, introduce my, for me to introduce my cousin, uh, Margaret Minnis, and her friend, Dr. Mike Moodian, who are up here in the uh, gallery watching us this afternoon. Welcome. Thank you. File item 56, AB 1885, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1885 by Assemblymember Hill, an act relating to malicious mischief. Mr. Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. AB 1885 seeks to address a major problem with limousine drivers who illegally solicit customers at San Francisco International Airport by simply eliminating a 1973 exemption found in section 602.4 of the Penal Code. The amendments taken in the Senate make technical changes to the bill. I respectfully ask for your concurrence on Senate amendments. Mr. Norby. I ask for no vote, Madam Speaker. This creates a new crime, a new misdemeanor. Now for a licensed cab driver or limousine operator, to make an un unauthorized pickup at an airport where he's not licensed to make pickups may be a violation of that airport policy, but does it rise to the level of making him a criminal? Seeing no further questions or debate, Mr. Hill, you may close. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this just it changes and removes an exemption that was done in the 1970s that excluded limousine drivers from the penalty, and that's all it's doing is adding limousine drivers back to the, uh, uh, the penalty that uh, should be appropriate and is in place today for other violations. I ask for your aye vote. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. <coughs> Mr. Hill moves the call. File item 60, AB 1956, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1956 by Assemblyman Monning, an act relating to wildlife. Mr. Monning. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, amendments taken in the Senate clarify the exemption that allows nonprofit organizations who participate in the Condor Recovery Program to transport dead carcasses for the purpose of providing food for free ranging California condors. Now, I think most people know that condors do not eat leaping lizards. They don't eat any live animals. They do eat um, dead animals. <clears throat> so with that in mind, I bring your attention to the fact that the amendments also delete reference to the MOU that the Department of Fish and Game has with nonprofit organizations who participate in these types of programs. On behalf of the condors, I ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further question, uh, Ms. Evans. Question of the author. Without objection. 
Mr. Monty, condors don't eat leaping lizards, but do they eat ladyfingers? Um, I'll have to look into that. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 42, no zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 65, AB 2093, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2093 by Assembly V. Manuel Perez and others, an act relating to health care coverage. Mr. Perez? Mr. Perez. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. And members, uh, vaccines are among the most cost effective components of preventive medical care. AB 2093 will protect access to childhood immunizations by properly reimbursing physicians for the administration cost of providing vaccines. This bill received 73 votes last time on the Assembly floor and bipartisan support in the Senate as well as here. I thank you and respectfully ask for your eye vote on concurrence. Dr. Fuller. Members, I question this bill and that it does not cover healthy families. It does not co cover medical, Medi-Cal. It does not cover state workers. And it only applies to uh, private business, which would then raise the rates for the people taking the insurance. So it, it seems to me that <coughs> You know, this may not be exactly the right bill. I think that uh, vac vaccinations are a good thing. Um, but I do believe that um, we shouldn't leave a whole class of people uh, out there. Um, if this is a good thing, then perhaps we ought to look at it in a different way. Uh, I'm in opposition to this bill. Thank you. Mr. Fletcher. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, I rise in support of this bill. The uh, author tried this bill last year, and there were a number of issues outstanding. Uh, and I want to commend the author for, author for taking the time to work through those issues uh, step by step to try and find some resolution. While it is not a perfect bill, uh, very, few, very few bills are, I think it's a step in the right direction. And when I hear directly from family physicians in my district, they tell me that the, the direct cost that they lose in administering vaccinations, the fact that they are losing money. And I've heard directly from doctors who said what we have to do is tell families well, we don't offer them anymore because we lose money. Just go down to the county clinic and tell them you don't have health insurance. That's not a good way to run a system. In San Diego in particular, we've seen outbreaks from, from uh, preventable diseases that are, that, are, that are preventable by the proper vaccination. And I think this bill goes a step in the right direction. And as it relates to, to vaccines, I think that there are public safety risks that you incur when you make decisions on your own and you usually bear the consequences for those. If you want to live an unhealthy lifestyle, you will bear the consequences for those. When we have situations where children are not vaccinated because we have a broken system, all of our children are exposed to the risk. Uh, and so for those reasons, uh, I want to commend the offer for working through difficult issues um, and, and putting us a, a, a step further towards, I think, better public uh, health policy. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, Mr. Perez, you may close. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'd just like to thank as well Assemblymember Fletcher uh, for co-authoring this bill and for being helpful throughout the entire process. And as well, uh, I do appreciate the points uh, made by Dr. Fuller. Uh, I would like to increase it in the future, expand it, and I would love to work with you uh, next year so we can do just that. I ask for your aye vote and concurrence. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 41, noes 2, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 66, AB 2133, Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2133 by Assembly Nilo, an act relating to geologic hazards. Mr. Nilo. Uh, thank you. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to introduce, oh no, I already did that. Uh, I'm presenting uh, AB 2133, uh, which uh, I know you will all recall, exempts the University of California Berkeley's Memorial Stadium, Go Bears, from the application of the Alquist Priolo Earthquake Fault Zoning Act 
It declares that Memorial Stadium requires seismic retrofitting, which is necessary to strengthen the structures and provide increased resistance uh, to an earthquake. Senate amendments just clarify that the legislature recognizes that the exemption process under the act is not available to buildings owned by the state. In other words, this is specific and only to uh, Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, which was always the intent. Uh, so it's perfectly consistent with the original intent of the bill. I ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 43, no 0. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 69, AB 2173. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2173 by Assemblyman Bell and others, an act relating to emergency services. Mr. Bell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, uh, this bill is back from concurrence. AB uh, 2173 will provide increased Medi Cal funding for emergency air ambulance transportation by imposing a flat $4 fee on each motor vehicle violation in California with the exception of parking tickets. The Senate amendments increase the vehicle penalty from $3 to $4, provide a general fund offset of 20%, allow the reimbursement to the State Department of Health Care Services, the counties and the courts for the administration of this bill, ensures that there be no general fund impact, requires a sunset on January of 2006. The revenue generated from by the penalty will be augmented by a one-to-one -one federal matching funds. The Medi-Cal rates for the air ambulances have not been increased since 1993. Uh, these services provide life-saving emergency transportation for the most critical patients with ground transportation uh, is not fast enough. The providers provide a 100-mile radius and cover multiple counties, which make it virtually impossible for them to be funded by local tax support. This is a bipartisan bill supported by a wide range of emergency medical services providers. And for this reason, as I ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Mr. Bell moves the call. File item 70, AB 2182, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2182 by Assembly Member Huffman and others, an act relating to contractual assessments. Mr. Huffman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This is a bill that will extend the state's very successful voluntary contractual assessment program known as PACE to uh, financing for property owners who want to replace leaky sewer laterals and also to upgrade septic systems. It's a bill that passed off this house uh, with 65 votes, bipartisan support, no opposition, no cost to the state, and Senate amendments uh, really make minor technical changes. So I respectfully request your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Mr. Huffman moves a call. File item 71, AB 2187, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2187 by Assembly Member Rambula, an act relating to employment. Mr. Rambula. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Assembly Bill 2187 is a measure that will improve the prosecution of wage theft. Senate amendments clarified definitions in the bill and removed a provision at the request of district attorneys. This bill puts together a penalty package that improves upon current law. It applies it to situations where an employer has demonstrated a willful theft of wages. I respectfully ask for an I vote on the uh, concurrence on Senate amendments. Mr. Beer, Bell Barry Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, uh, once again, and we had this debate earlier on business and, and and how we have become such an unfriendly business state. This bill, again, on its own, doesn't kill you. But as you pile these bricks more and more on the business community, on the ag community, uh, pretty much, pretty soon it's too much to, uh, to, to, to stand up to. And so uh, instead of rolling out the red tape, 
and the regulations. We need to roll out red carpet in business in California, and for that reason, I strongly urge a no vote. Mr. Norby. I join my colleague from Ceres on opposing this, Madam Chair. Just a few minutes ago, we created a new misdemeanor for limo drivers who may not be where they're supposed to be for picking up somebody who needs a ride, and now we're creating a new cla another cl class of criminals and business owners who may have legitimate disputes with employees who now are threatened with a misdemeanor charge. So instead of creating whole new classes of criminals in the state, we had to look at legalizing certain things that are crimes currently. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, Mr. Rombulo, you may close. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Just to clear up a couple of points. First of all, this bill only applies when there are no legitimate disputes involved. This would not be applicable uh, if there are appeals uh, pending. This would only be after there are absolutely no disputes that wages are owed. It would only apply if the employer has the ability to pay has the obligation to pay and chooses not to pay. It really is no different than if we stepped out of this building this afternoon and somebody stole money from us. We would want the district attorney to prosecute. This bill gives district attorneys the tools to better pursue those employers that are creating a, a bad climate for the good employers. These employers are the ones that have asked people to work for them. Someone, someone has given of their sweat and blood to perform the work, and after they have performed the work, the wages have not been paid. I think that this will help improve the business climate by supporting those good employers that follow the law, and I would respectfully ask for an I vote. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Mr. Rombula moves the call. File item 77, AB 2536, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2536 by Assemblymember Carter, an act relating to housing. Ms. Carter. Thank you, Madam Speaker. AB 2536 expands the funding options for providers seeking to assist and serve the state's homeless population by authorizing multifamily supportive housing projects to be eligible to compete alongside shelter programs for bond funds under the Emergency Housing and Assistance Program. Amendments taken in the Senate were strictly double-jointing language. I respectfully ask for a concurrence in Senate amendments. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 53, no 0. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 79, AB 2543, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2543 by Assemblyman Bonnie Lowenthal and others, an act relating to charter schools. Ms. Lowenthal. Thank you, Madam Speaker. AB 2543 will set a timeline for districts and county offices to work with when they are making charter renewal decisions. Existing law lacks a specific timeline. With this bill, parents will know which school their children will attend, and charter school employees will not have to wait till the last minute to know whether or not they're going to keep their jobs. Senate amendments address concerns with the bill, and AB 2543 has received bipartisan support and is similar to the bill that this House approved 75 to 0 last June. I ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Ms. Lowenthal moves the call. File item 80, AB 2560, clerk will read. 
I'll sign your bill 2560 by Assemblyman Brownlee and others, an act relating to education finance and declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Ms. Brownlee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. AB 2560 authorizes the California Department of Education and the California School Finance Authority under the Treasurer's Office to allocate $720 million in federal qualified school construction bond tax credits made available by the Federal American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Senate amendments establish eligibility criteria for allocation of the funds. The bill passed the Senate with no no, bo no, no votes. I respectfully ask for your aye vote on concurrence. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 54, no zero on the urgency. Ayes 54, no zero on the measure. Senate amendments are concurred in. Fall item 82, AB 2616, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2616 by Assembly Member Hill and act relating to elections. Mr. Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. AB 2616 is a bill vital to ensuring that every vote counts. Sponsored by the Secretary of State, AB 2616 gives Californians who vote by mail the ability to verify that their ballots were counted. As passed in the Assembly, the bill would have become operative when the Secretary of State implemented VoteCal, the statewide voter registration database in 2013. However, there have been complications moving this system forward, and at this point, the Secretary of State is not sure when VoteCal will become operative. The amendments taken in the Senate remove vote cal from the bill and instead require the county elections officials to permit a vote by mail voter to find out if their ballot was counted or not. I respectfully ask for your aye vote in, in concurrence on amendments in the Senate. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 52, no zero, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 83, AB 2671, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2671 by Assemblyman Cook and others, an act relating to taxation to take effect immediately, tax levy. Colonel Cook, concur, concur. I understand, I understand. Uh, AB 2671 seeks to waive the $800 minimum franchise tax fee for certain corporations that are owned by service members that are deployed. The businesses must have ceased operation or operate at a loss for the waiver to be granted. Um, the, uh, we had amendments that were taken in the Senate. They were minor and technical, and this bill has had no, no votes against it. I ask for your concurrence. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 54, no zero, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 84, AB 2694, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2694 by Assemblymember Blumenfield, an act relating to instructional materials. Mr. Blumenfield. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. AB 2694 is back for concurrence in Senate amendments. This bill encourages schools to choose the most current and relevant technology when updating their instructional materials. Amendments were technical and clarifying in nature. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 57, no zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 85. AB 2729, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2729 by Assembly Amiano and others, an act relating to vehicles. Mr. Amiano. Yes, Madam Speaker and colleagues, Assembly Bill 2729 is a district bill authorizing until January 1st, 2013, the city and county of San Francisco to use an automated traffic enforcement system or red light camera to enforce their prohibition against turning at a specified intersection. Senate amendments shorten the sunset date in the bill and expand the scope of the information that is required to be evaluated and reported to the policy committees of both houses of the legislature. The bill does not remove the sunset, the sunset date by which the report is to be made, but rather sets a collection period prior to the sunset date for which 
evaluated data may be gathered. The bill is received by bipartisan support in both houses, and I thank you for your consideration and urge an I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Mr. Ramiano moves a call. File item 86, AB 2743, clerk will read. Assembly, Assembly Bill 2743 by Assemblyman Nava, an act relating to rental property. Mr. Nava. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. A good, strong bipartisan bill. 2743 prohibits landlords in California from requiring both decline and devocalization of an animal as a condition of tenancy. This has the support of the California Apartment Owners Association. The amendments taken in the Senate remove uh, concerns regarding the bill's private right of action. It's been cleaned up. Uh, uh, no reason why Republicans can't support this bill. Ask for an I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 44, noes 10, Senate amendments are concurred in. Okay, members, we're gonna do Senate bills right now and we're gonna start from the bottom and go backwards. So we are gonna start with file item 212. File item 212, that's Ms. Skinner. SB 1476, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1476 by Senator Padilla, an act relating to public utilities. Ms. Skinner. Thank you. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker, members. The purpose of Senate Bill 1476 is to ensure that utility customers have the benefits of the new technology of smart meters without relinquishing control over their own personal data, such as the consumption data that is indicated on the meter and other personally identifiable information which is held by the utilities and sometimes third parties with which the utilities contract. So the bill also ensures that customers will have an interface to access their data without relinquishing this data to a third party. It strikes a delicate balance between maintaining the confidentiality of consumer data and the development of energy efficiency and demand response programs. There is no opposition to the bill, and it hasn't received uh, any um, no votes, so I respectfully ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 58, no zero, measure passes. File item 211, SB 1321. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 1321 by Senator Kehoe, an act relating to state race track leasing commission. Ms. Galgiani. Senate Bill 1321 is a measure intended to improve performance and efficiency of the state racetrack leasing commission, which is the body that governs the Del Mar racetrack in San Diego County. State law is not clear about the powers and duties of designees of the Department of Food and Ag and the Department of General Services who serve on the commission. This has created confusion regarding procedures of the commission. SB 1321 solves the problem by specifying that the director of the Department of General Services and Secretary of Food and Ag may designate a deputy to act in his or her place on the commission. SB 1321 is a small but important me measure. It's narrowly crafted. It's an author-sponsored bill. I ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 41, noes 19. Measure passes. File item 209, SB 1201. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 1201 by Senator DeSonia and Act Relinked to Sex Offenders. Mr. Fletcher. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, uh, SB 1201 uh, by Senator DeSanier requires that all parolees who are transferred from any other state or federal government will be assessed using the current risk assessment tool, which is used for California sex offenders. It also allows the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation to hold a mentally disordered offender for 45 days past their release date in order to undergo a proper mental evaluation. Uh, it has broad support, and I would request your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 65, no zero. Measure passes. Is there any objection to the speaker taking up AB 1602 without reference to file? Okay, seeing and hearing none, Mr. Speaker. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1602 by Assemblymember John A. Perez, an act relating to health care coverage and making an appropriation therefore. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, AB 1602 establishes the duties and operations of the California Health Benefit Exchange where eligible individuals and small businesses can claim their federal premium, cost sharing, subsidies, and tax credits. The Senate amendments do the following. They added additional protections to the general fund, public oversight and reporting requirements to the exchange and its staff, including posting of its annual budget and salaries of exchange uh, employees on the website, limits the plan assessment to one-year operating expenses, similar to the Department of Consumer Affairs, boards and commissions. The requirements for annual reporting to the legislature on progress expenses and operations and an annual audit. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 41, noes 22, measure passes. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 208, SB 515, clerk will read. Senate Bill 515 by Senator Hancock and act relating to career technical education. Mr. Furatani. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Members, SB 515 is a career technical education bill that passed the assembly on a bipartisan vote in July. It was returned to the assembly for possible amendments. The author has decided not to amend the bill at this time, and so I respectfully request your approval in returning the measure to the Senate. SB 515 requires regional occupation centers, high schools, and community colleges to ensure that at least 50% of the sequence courses offered are in career sectors where there is a high priority need for skilled persons as determined by the Labor and Workforce Development Agency. SB 515 also encourages consultation with the local workforce investment board in determining how career tech education programs can address the high priority career sector needs in the region or in the state. SB 515 passed the assembly in July on a bipartisan vote last year. I urge an I vote because there's been no opposition. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate. Oh, Ms. Brownlee. Question of the author? Without objection. Mr. Furatani, did you say that you're not accepting the amendments? And from what house? What amendments are you not accepting? Uh, what happened was that it was returned to the assembly for possible amendments, but they never manifested themselves. So the author decided to go forward with what she has. I, I don't understand. That's all I have. There were no amendments, she accepted no amendments, and we're voting on the bill as is. What? And I asked for an I vote. It's asking for t <laughs> Can we put this over for a few minutes just to understand what's um, occurring here? Um, Mr. Wilson will come over, and in the meantime, did you want
Seeing no further questions or debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 41, noes 12, measure passes. File item, file item 202, SB 1414, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1414 by Senator Kehoe, an act relating to, public, to the Public Utilities Commission. Ms. Skinner. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, uh, SB 1414 clarifies the code related to the Public Utility Commission's administrative process for the timeline and manner in which the PUC may extend the review period for rehearing applications. Rehearing applications are submitted by parties that are affected by PUC de decisions. Current statute gives the PUC 60 days to review each rehearing application. However, in many cases, the review is not completed in 60 days. And the PUC informally works with the parties to extend the review period. SB 1414 provides the PUC with a formal and transparent process to extend the rehearing application by up to 120 days, and if need be, extend it again through formal action by the commission. The process keeps the commissioners informed about the review management of these applications and provides the parties awaiting their review a formal schedule on when it will happen. There is no opposition, and I respectfully um, ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 46, noes 10. Measure passes. File item 205, SB 1340, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1340 by Senator Keogh and others, an act relating to energy. Mr. Solorio. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. This bill is about facilitating the smooth transition toward plug-in electric vehicles, as this fall, plug-in electric vehicles by Nissan and Chevy will become readily available to consumers. Uh, this bill does two things to facilitate the transition. First, it ensures that the California Energy Commission create a program to provide financial assistance to offset the cost for any residential electrical upgrades that are needed in order to properly install an electric vehicle charging station. And second, the bill allows public agencies through the Property Assessed Clean Energy Reserve Program, also known as PACE, to assist property owners in financing electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Uh, finally, let me also say that uh, the bill has the support of the Sierra Club, American Lung Association, Nissan, Southern California Edison, PG&E, SDG&E, and the Union of Concerned Scientists. I ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 41, noes 20, measure passes. File item 201, SB 1391, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1391 by Senator Yee, an act relating to taxation. Mr. Swanson. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. SB 1391 requires uh, corporations of our state to that claim tax incentives to su submit to the uh, federal uh, tax board the number of jobs retained and created by the credit. Corporations uh, will be liable to pay incentives proportionally if they do not achieve employment goals intended by the credit. Um, we have heard on a number of occasions uh, the importance of developing business opportunities in the state of California and providing tax incentives to develop that. This measure, uh, simply put, adds accountability uh, to that mission. Uh, we either create jobs uh, by allowing taxpayers' dollars to be used in this way, or we do not. 
Uh, if we do, then we want that to be reported, and we want the corporations that take advantage of that to, in fact, be held accountable. Uh, this is a very positive measure, and I ask for your aye vote. Ms. Harkey. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, here we go again, more with tax credits, and we just keep pounding and pounding and grinding them away. Now, um, I wonder if they can report jobs saved. That seems to be something that's going on at the national level, that there's jobs saved rather than jobs created. So, uh, you know, I, it's, it's just one more slap in the face to businesses that are trying to employ here, trying to stay here. We know we're one of the highest tax states in the nation. We know that we're one of the over-regulated, most regulated anyway, even if you don't consider it over-regulated. And I, I really think it's time to quit quit beating on our companies that are employing people here and, and encourage them rather than punishing them. We encourage our children to do good things. We need to encourage all people to do good things, not punish them or put them up on a radar screen and make them report and report and report. Uh, you know, people don't react well to that. Businesses aren't going to react well to that. And we're just going to keep losing more jobs. Thank you. Seeing no further questions or debate, Mr. Swanson, you may close. Yes, uh, and, and, and a, an answer to my distinguished colleague's uh, a question, yes. Uh, jobs that are retained also count. Uh, we believe that, uh, that in fact, uh, we want to support businesses in California uh, that are held accountable to this uh, measure. There's a lot of taxpayer dollars that are used uh, in support um, of these tax credit uh, yearly, nearly $14.5 billion in tax breaks uh, goes to companies. These are taxpayer dollars, and there has to be some accountability. I, I respectfully ask you for your aye vote. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Mr. Swanson moves the call. File item 197. File item 193. SB 918, clerk will read. Senate Bill 918 by Senator Pavley, an act relating to water recycling. Mr. De La Torre. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and members. SB 918 helps implement the State Water Board's policy on recycled water by allowing the Board to fund the Department of Public Health's criteria for the indirect potable use of wa reuse of water. The bill is funded by using existing waste discharge permit funds. Specifically, the bill requires that it adopt Uniform water recycling criteria for indirect potable water use. De developed uniform water recycling criteria for surface water augmentation. And investigate the feasibility of developing uniform water recycling criteria for direct potable use. I urge your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 41, no 16, measure passes. File item 195, SB 1116, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1116 by Senator Huff and others, an act relating to heritage school instruction and declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Ms. Brownlee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. SB 1116 creates a process for heritage schools to be recognized as private schools rather than child care centers. Heritage schools are privately funded schools that complement a child's compulsory education by focusing on foreign languages, cultures, and customs. 
Many heritage schools help prepare students for courses in advanced language and literature in high school and beyond. This bill requires heritage schools to register with the superintendent of public instruction, much like private schools. The bill requires heritage school employees to be fingerprinted and ensures adequate health and safety standards for the students. The bill also requires heritage schools to notify parents that their children's enrollment does not satisfy compulsory education requirements and that the school is exempt for for child care licensing. This is a bipartisan solution that balances the need for health and safety standards for heritage school students while also allowing their continued existence. I respe respectfully ask for an aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Eyes 58, no zero on the urgency. Eyes 58, no zero on the measure. Measure passes. We're going to go to file item 200, SB 1214 on the amendments. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 1214 with amendments by Senator Portantino. Mr. Portantino. Thank you, Madam Speaker. There are amendments at the desk for SB 1214 that are amendments to avoid a chaptering issue with Mr. Bell's AB 12. I respectfully ask these amendments to be put on print and go back on file. Thanks. Seeing no further questions or debate, and without objection, we can take a voice vote on these amendments. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted, out to print, and back on file. File item 192, SB 733. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 733 by Senator Leno, an act relating to grants for trauma centers. Mr. Hagman. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. SB 733 allows, upon appropriation from the legislature, the Victim Compensation and Government Claims Board to administer up to two million annually in grants from the restitution fund to improve treatment and services for crime victims through trauma recovery centers. The state auditor has confirmed that this current system of victim compensation has failed to adequately meet the needs of California's most traumatized victims. SB 733 not only provides a time of care, but also implements a more cost-effective nationally recognized model that meets special needs of crime victims immediately following their crime-related trauma. Amendments taken in the Assembly Appropriations Committee ensure that the grant program will not be funded unless the restitution fund contains a prudent year-end reserve of no less than 25% of its operating funds as projected in the governor's January budget proposal. The bill is supported by University of California office of the President of the California Catholic Conference and a host of victim advocacy organizations, including Crime Victims United. The grant program established in, in SB 733 takes an important step toward expanding trauma recovery services to victims throughout California and has received strong bipartisan support. I ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 50, no zero, measure passes. File item 189, SB 550, clerk will read. Senate Bill 550 by Senator Flores and others, an act relating to natural resources. Mr. Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. SB 550 has been simplified to require an operator of an oil or gas well to provide the surface rights owner with a 10-day written notice and legal documentation of the intent to enter the surface owner's property for the purpose of extraction of underlying oil, gas, or minerals. A surface rights owner should at least be notified of such an agreement with a drilling company, considering the potential damage that drilling could potentially cause to surface resources or groundwater. As a result of the most recent amendments, opposition has been removed. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 57, no zero. Measure passes. File item 188, SB 1146. Clerk will read. 
Senate Bill 1146 by Senator Flores and others, an act relating to finance lenders. Mr. Eng. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. It is with a great honor and great enthusiasm that I present Senate Bill 1146 relating to consumer finance lenders. This bill is a visionary authorization of the creation of a four-year statewide pilot program under the C California Finance Lenders Law that will increase the availability of low dollar value loans up to $2,500. Currently, there are few banking services that assist underbanked and unbanked individuals who are mainly lower income Latino and African American families with finance options for relatively small loans. Thus, many turn to payday lenders who provide little opportunity to build or repair credit. Everyone on this floor is aware of exorbitant interest rates that are allowed under these situations. The sponsor of this bill, uh, Progreso uh, Financiero, has made 40,000 loans funding such individuals at a fraction of what payday lenders charge, but after five years still haven't been able to turn a profit. We're simply asking for a small adjustment to a statute that is archaic and in need of reform. reform. The current financial crisis has left even more working families without access to mainstream banking, particularly credit. Some families have seen their credit scores destroyed as a result of job loss, foreclosure, and other adverse consequences. Uh, the crisis this bill is a huge step forward in assisting the most deserving members of our community with credit establishment and credit building solutions in an environment that has been hard hit by our struggling economy. This bill has widespread bipartisan support. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-61, no zero, measure passes. File item 185, Ms. Brownlee. File item 185, SB 1357, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1357 by Senator Steinberg and others, an act relating to people data. Ms. Brownlee. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, SB 1357, um, without it, uh, the statewide education data system will not have the capacity to collect attendance data. Therefore, when a student transfers uh, from one district to another, information on that student's attendance would not be included in the student's longitudinal record. This is critical information for districts trying to improve graduation rates and reduce the number of students dropping out of school. SB 1357, contingent on federal funding for this purpose, requires the Department of Education to prepare the statewide data system to incorporate student attendance data. SB 1357 has received no no votes in either house. It is supported by the Chronic Absence and Attendance Partnership, a broad coalition that includes business, education, community, health, civic, law enforcement, and children's groups. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I-63, no zero, measure passes. File item 184, SB 1230, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1230 by Senator DeSonia, an act relating to human trafficking. Mr. Swanson. Madam Speaker and members, SB 1230 is an important bill for the people of our great state of California. It requires uh, the workplace posting of information related to slavery and human trafficking. Specifically, the bill will require the posting of the National hu Human Trafficking Resource Center and the Coalition to Abolish Slavery and Trafficking, trafficking Toll-Free Human uh, trafficking hotlines which provide services and support of the elimination of slavery and human trafficking. Human trafficking is an unfortunate uh, widespread uh, form of modern day slavery and one of the fastest growing criminal industries in the world. Uh, this bill uh, will require the Labor Commission to prepare the language uh, with the federal and state law enforcement working to uh, investigate the criminal network involving human trafficking, local and state community members, including neighbor 
neighbors health care workers teachers among others are the most often to be in the best position to recognize and report possible incidents of human trafficking and i ask for your i vote seeing no further questions or debate clerk will open the roll all members vote who desire to vote all members vote who desire to vote Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 41, noes 19, measure passes. File item 182, SB 309, clerk will read. Senate Bill 309 by Senator Cheney, an act relating to public resources. Ms. Caballero. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I'm proud to present SB 309 on behalf of Senator Duchaney. The California Conservation Corps is a work service training and development program for young adults using environmental conservation and public service work as a means for personal growth. Through the CCC membership, though the, the CCC membership has historically included at-risk youth, this has been unclear in the statute. SB 309 would prioritize foster youth and other at-risk youth for admissions into the California Conservation Corps. It would explicitly provide for that. Currently, 70% of the inmates in state prison are former foster youth. This will not change unless we provide them with an opportunity to get the education and job training that they desperately need. Members, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 50, noes 4, measure passes. File item 180, SB 1284, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1284 by Senator Duchenne, an act relating to water quality. Mr. Calderon. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, members, uh, this is a measure that attempts to address to an, issue, an issue regarding monetary policies um, on assessed water districts that are way out of proportion to the um, violation. Uh, it, this uh, fine is a minimum, uh, maximum minimal uh, penalty, and it's based on the definition, which is imprecise. And there are a number of water districts um, that have had to pay or are on the hook for paying substantial fines. Um, this does not relieve them of all those fines. They still have to pay a fine under the bill, but it clears up the definition and it will result in some relief to those water districts. There is no opposition to this bill. I ask for an I vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 58, no zero, measure passes. File item 179, SB 1254, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1254 by Senator Leno, an act relating to contractors. Mr. Berryhill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, today I bring to you Senator Leno's SB 1254. Under existing law, employers must secure workmen's compensation for all their workers, and the failure to knowingly do so is a misdemeanor of the labor code. Despite the requirement in the law, construction contractors not providing workers' compensation coverage for their employees are a large component of the underground economy and a growing underground economy. Besides gaining a tremendous unfair cost advantage over law-abiding contractors, property owners hiring these unlawful contractors could be held liable for injuries to the injured workers. Currently, the Contractors License Board has no direct authority to deal with this issue. SB 1254 will provide the Register of the License Board with the authority to issue an administrative stop work order to any contractor who is not providing workman's comp for their employees and make failure to comply with the order a misdemeanor. SB 1254 will increase the number of CSLB peace officers from three to 12 to help enforce this new provision of the law. And I want to stress, these additional positions will have to go through the regular budget approval process in order to ultimately be hired. 
This measure passed through the Senate on a unanimous vote and also passed through the Assembly Business and Professions Committee on a unanimous vote. I also want to stress that this bill has never had any opposition and is strongly supported by the entire construction industry, the California Chamber of Commerce, and even the California applicant attorneys. This is an extremely important bill that deserves the vote of each and every one of you here today on the floor, and I respectively ask for an aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 58, no zero, measure passes. File item 178, SB 1207, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1207 by Senator Keogh and others, an act relating to land use. Mr. Delatory. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, in the last few years, the state has been spending up to $1 billion a year for fire suppression. This figure will only increase due to drought, climate change, and continued development in state responsibility areas. SB 1207 requires local governments to review and revise the safety elements of their general plans by 2015 and periodically thereafter to include information about local fire hazards in their state responsibility areas and very high fire hazard severity zones, such as mapping data, goals, and policies. SB 1207 is a preventive approach that will improve public safety and ease the financial burden on both the state and local governments through early, consistent, and meaningful land use planning. I urge your aye vote. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 43, noes 13. Measure passes. File item 177, SB 964. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 964 by Senator Alquist and others, an act relating to the workforce training and making an appropriation therefor. Ms. Galgiani. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. This is bill is about workforce development for high-speed rail, which is set to break ground in 2012 and generate over a million direct and indirect jobs. It appropriates $500,000 from the existing high-speed rail bond to conduct a workforce assessment to ensure California has the specialized electrical engineers, software engineers, train operators, and others to build, operate, and maintain the high-speed rail system. Specifically, it seeks to address the potential work shor workforce shortage in certain crafts and skills required for the high-speed system by doing two things, conducting a labor market survey and second, creating an advisory committee. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 42, noes 18, measure passes. Members, we're going to go out of order. File item 144, SB 1149, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1149 by Senator Corbett, an act relating to residential tenancies and foreclosure. Mr. Fuhr. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. So this is a pretty straightforward bill regarding foreclosure and tenants. When tenants are in foreclosed properties, we have found that many times they're the recipients of what appear to be notices directing them to leave properties which have been foreclosed upon through no fault of their own when in fact they have rights and they don't need to leave immediately. 
This bill does two things. First, it requires that in such situations, tenants receive a face sheet that describes what their rights are when they are the unwitting victims in a foreclosure situation. And secondly, it would preclude there being a record on the tenant's permanent file that they were a loser in an unlawful detainer proceeding unless they actually lost the case. The bottom line is that if you're a tenant and the apartment you're living in is foreclosed upon, you shouldn't have to suffer because of the owner's failure to pay his or her mortgage. This bill enacts two common sense reforms, and I urge your continued support for the legislation. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Mr. Fuhrer moves the call. 162, file item 162, SB 1329, clerk will read. Senate Bill 1329 by Senator Leno and others, an act relating to residential care facilities for the elderly. Mr. Adams. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Members, this bill shares a tremendous amount of similarities to the bill that was just previously presented, and that what it seeks to do is take care of those people who are in, are in the residential care facilities. That is the homes for our elderly. If they are being taken care of in a residential care facility and the, the facility is about to be foreclosed on, all this bill does is require that the landlord or the person who owns the property notify the elderly person that the, the property is about to be foreclosed on. It's a common sense measure that makes sure that the people who are going to be most desperately impacted by a foreclosure have due notice. Members, I would strongly urge your I vote on this measure. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Ayes 58, no zero. Measure passes. File item 174, SB 346 on the amendments. Clerk will read. Senate Bill 346 with amendments by Assemblymember Chesbro. Madam Speaker, these amendments. Mr. Chesbro. Madam Speaker, these amendments are corrective and non substantive in nature. I ask her I vote on the amendments and that the bill be sent out to print and placed back on file. Seeing no further questions or debate, and without objection, we will take a voice vote on these amendments. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted, out to print, and back on file. Mr. Calderon. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, request permission, unanimous consent to return to motions and resolutions. Without objection. Um, uh, SB 1456 is at the desk. I request unanimous consent to rescind the August 23rd floor vote on SB 1456 by Mr. Simidian and return the bill to the third reading file. Without objection. Also request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirements to allow the gov governmental organizations committee to meet and hear uh, AB441 by Mr. Hall, AB605 by Mr. Portentino, AB1798 by Ms. Evans on Thursday, August 26th upon the call of the chair in a room to be determined. Without objection. I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirements to allow the Housing and Community Development Committee to meet and hear AB 2136 by V. Manuel Perez on Thursday, uh, Thursday August 26th upon the call of the chair in a room to be determined. Without objection. Likewise, request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirement to allow the Public Safety Committee to meet and hear AB 33 by Mr. Nava, AB 34 by Mr. Nava, AB 668 by Mr. Liu and AB 1022 by Mr. Nava on Thursday, August 26, upon the call of the chair in a room to be determined. Without objection. Also request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirement to allow the Revenue Taxation Committee to meet and hear AB 756 by Ms. Ma, AB 1341 by Ms. Lowenthal, uh, and AB 1530 by Ms. Skinner on Thursday, August 26, upon the call of the chair in a room to be determined. Without objection. And finally, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirement to allow the Transportation Committee to meet and hear AB 1078 by Mr. Fuhrer on Thursday, August 26th, upon call of the chair in a room to be determined. Without objection.
Okay, members, we're gonna be lifting calls. We have 11 items on call. We're gonna lift them in order. If members are ready. File item four, AB 677, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 44, noes 23, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 11, AB 1451, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 44, noes 27, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 58, AB 1933, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 69, no zero, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 56, AB 1885, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 58, noes 9, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 69, AB 2173, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 56, noes 11, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 70, AB 2182, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 50, noes 17, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 71, AB 2187, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 43, noes 25, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 79, AB 2543, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 44, noes 24, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 85, AB 2729, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 43, noes 24, Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 201, SB 1391, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Mr. Swanson moves the call. File item 144, SB 1149, clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, ayes 44, noes 24, measure passes. We've got some committees meeting upon adjournment today. The Agriculture Committee will meet in room 444. Education Committee will meet in room 126. The Health Committee will meet in the Rules Committee room. The Judiciary Committee will meet in room 4202. And Local Government Committee will meet in room 447. Mr. Calderon. Uh, yes, um, Madam Speaker, um, may I inquire first, did, did you um, uh, refer uh, AB 23 or 234 by Mr. Huffman and SB 1456 committee and, uh, to the Natural Resources Committee pursuant to 77.2? You did it yesterday? Okay. All right, well then, um, in that event, looks like these uh, were referred yesterday. 
Uh, so I request unanimous consent to waive the final notice requirement to allow Natural Resources Committee to meet and hear AB 234 by Huffman and SB 1456 by Smithian on Thursday, August 26, upon the call of the chair in a room to be determined. Without objection and AB 244, 234 is re referred under assembly rule. SB 1456. Uh, SB 1456. I already referred SB 1456 this morning under Rule 77.2 okay. to the Natural Resources Committee. Well, that's it. so both of them have been referred. So now I, uh, so I just, I'm not sure if you granted the motion. Now request unanimous consent to waive the file notice to allow Natural Resources Committee to hear those bills uh, tomorrow um, upon the call of the chair. Without objection. And f uh, and finally, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirements to allow the Insurance Committee to meet and hear AB 2151 by. Ms. Torres, on Thursday, August 26, upon the call of the chair, in a room to be determined. Without objection. Okay, members, we've got one bill on call. Mr. Nastande, Mr. Nastande, you have an in memoriam today. In memoriam, Mr. Nastande. Mr. Nastande. Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise with great sadness to adjourn the memory of Palm Desert Councilman Dick Kelly, who passed away on Friday. Richard Kelly was elected to Palm Desert City Council in 1982 and had served on the body ever since. During that time, he was appointed to six separate terms as mayor by his, by his council colleagues. A partial list of Mr. Kelly's many accomplishments while on the council includes a successful push for a policy encouraging the use of drought-tolerant landscaping throughout the community vigorous advocacy for the development of the Desert Willow Golf Resort, and a lead role in the establishment of a curbside recy recycling program for the city before such things were common in municipal government. Mr. Kelly's dedication to excellence and service were on display throughout his life. An accomplished high school and college athlete, he was born and raised in Southern California. Dick Kelly left college to serve as a pilot in the U.S. Army during World War II. After the war, he accepted a temporary job with the California Water and Telephone Company, which, which was supposed to be a two-week job that turned into a 36-year career, career in telecommunications that concluded with his retirement in 1983 as a Coachella Valley Division Manager for GTE. His work for the phone company sparked an interest in local government. In November 1982, he ran for a seat on the Palm Desert Council and won. He soon retired from the phone company to devote more attention to his new job representing the citizens of Palm Desert. He would continue to devote that kind of focused attention to the council duties for the next 28 years. In a brief note, I called um, Dick Kelly on his re-election last year. I'm a resident of Palm Desert and asked him if I could support him in some way. And he said, Brian, no, I'm not accepting any money. I'm simply running on my accomplishments and what I've done for these years. And he said, if you want to put a quote on my website, that would be fine. And that was a breath of fresh air in this time of chasing donations, uh, as most politicians do, to run simply on his own accomplishments. Name says a lot about the man. Dick Kelly is survived by his wife, Mary Helm, his high school sweetheart, and beloved wife of 65 years. Two children, Robert and Kathleen, two grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. I ask you to join me today in a jury session in his memory. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Nostande. Please bring the name to the desk to be printed in the journal.
Okay, we're ready to lift the call on file item 201, SB 1391. Clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Eyes 43, noes 26, measure passes. Tomorrow, Thursday, August 26, floor session will be at 10 a.m. Floor session will be at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Mr. Calderon. Uh, Madam Speaker, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirement to allow Judiciary Committee to meet and to hear the following bills today upon adjournment of session in room 4202, AB 602 by Mr. Fuhrer and SB 127 by Mr. Calderon. Without objection. Also request unanimous consent to rescind the action whereby file item 49, AB 1530 by Ms. Skinner was referred to the Appropriations Committee. So, request unanimous consent to rescind the action whereby file item 49 AB 1530 Skinner was referred to the Appropriations Committee. Without objection. Also, uh, request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirement to allow the Appropriations Committee to meet and to hear AB 2098 by Mr. Miller, AB 308 by Mr. Cook, 15 minutes prior to session tomorrow in room 447. Without objection. Okay, I'm ready to entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Calderon moves, Mr. Hagman seconds, that this House stands adjourned until Thursday, August 26th at 10 a.m. Quorum call is lifted. Mr. Hagman seconded the motion. Thank you, Mr. Hagman.